like King James. サウンズライクイットイズストレートフロムザマザーファキングカセット。I hate when you get to a point in your career where people feel like they got you figured out and there's、mm. no more surprises.、Mm. I like people to press play on my stuff and still be surprised.、Oh. <音楽><音楽> Boys, what's going on? Hey, everybody, welcome back to the Dustin Bowerman Show. We're live once again on this February 25th, Thursday, rather. And,、uh, guys, guess what day it is? It's a, it's a, it's a freaking awesome Thursday. 
forgot the whole name of Thursdays even, awesome but it's Thursdays. still a great, now, awesome Thursdays now, dude. Even though that's not the case, I'm joined by Max and Anthony here today. Terrific Thursday, uh, rather. But we're back. Uh, week 8 of the Dustin Mowerman Show, and we have some spicy shit going on today, boys. We have some spicy news going on today. I mean, obviously, yesterday we talked about how the Florida Mayhem, or not Florida Mayhem, sorry, the Paris Eternal. What the hell is with my brain today, dude? Everything's in a fucking flux. Um, the Paris Eternal were being blacklisted, right? They were being blacklisted the other day, uh, or apparently they're being blacklisted the, right, the other day. Dan's responded to that tweet or whatever. I'm just going to quick touch on These aren't actually our topics, but I do kind of want to talk about it because of the fact that uh, Dan's was talking about it. If I could find Dan's Twitter, I'll, I'll hopefully find the actual scenario. But Deepay was actually talking about it as well. And Deepay was saying how... If I can pull up, I'll, maybe I'll just pull up that tweet actually real quick for you guys real quick before we even get into anything, any topics, just so we could address this because we talked about this yesterday and it kind of blew up to some degree, right? Because it kind of blew up to some degree, we might as well address this before the show starts. So David said, aka Depe, the head coach of the LA Gladiators and Overwatch League said, okay, normally I don't leak rumors, but I'll tell you guys which Overwatch League team has been blacklisted in NA. We've only been scrimming for four days, but I can tell you with full confidence that no one in NA is scrimming LA Valiant anymore. <laughs> Wings down. <laughs> Which obviously makes sense because LA Valiant is moving to China, uh, so of course nobody can fucking play. <laughs> nobody can fucking play against the LA Valiant, dude. Like, what do you think is happening, bro? I don't know, dude. It's kind I don't of even funny. Know the players yet? But how? How would they? No, no. It's it's fucking hilarious, dude. It's absolutely fucking great. <laughs> um. I don't know. Well, I, I need to find out who this other guy was. But basically, basically, uh, one of Paris's players were talking about how they were the only team they were losing to was American Tornado, um, which is fair. And then I think he said like that team was also beating eighty percent of Overwatch League teams. And then everybody was replying to him, and the replies were saying like kind of memeing on him. And listen, I like Dan's actually. I think Dan's is a great dude. I think Grains is, Dan's is a fine dude. You know, um, he obviously kind of wears his emotions on the shoulder, right? Um, and in this scenario, I can't really blame anybody like that that does this, right? Um, okay, they, Tolberto pulled it up for me. So Dan's the uh, the main tank player for Paris Eternal. Um, and he's been in my chat before. We've talked to him before, obviously, right? So Dan said the only Tier 2 team we've ever lost scrims in... Uh, or Lost Scrims verse was AT, aka American Tornado, in our first week of scrims, and they beat 80% of Overwatch League teams. I don't know why these rumors are here, uh, but keep praying for our downfall. Lol. Um, I don't know if he's necessarily talking to me specifically. I just kind of wanted to respond to it, I suppose, to see what uh, because like we like everything that we talk about on our show, you guys know, like we talk about a lot of shit on our show. We have no emotional attachment to like anything really here uh, like any any individual any whatever like we just talk about things to a degree where we just feel like it's important to talk about or we feel like it's it would get traction or something right that's the entire purpose of our show uh that's kind of how it works so personally i'm not in this situation i think like mentally right like maybe if i were another player I, in this situation i would be tilted or whatever right like i would be like oh man dan's coming back at me swinging dude you know, oh man, like, but now I'm just fucking like, dude, this is such petty shit. Like, <laughs> I don't really care. Maybe he's not talking to me. I don't think he is. I, I hope not. I think like, like I said, me and Dan's are cool. Like he's come to my Twitch chat. He's, he's subscribed to me before. He's like a nice dude. He used to play on Atlanta Academy. Um, but yeah, you looked at you to say something, Max. You had to say something or no? I mean, I fucking... yesterday you were saying that, like you, you were supporting Paris. You were saying how exactly pre, uh, preseason doesn't matter at all. So maybe yeah, maybe he isn't talking to me. I think he's more talking to Reddit, and I think he's more talking to like the social media platforms where people are shit talking Paris or whatever. I think that's probably what he's talking to. Because like we said, we didn't we did not trash Paris at all, like at You're all, really. I, yeah, it was it was more praising him. So I don't think he's like he. I think he would have called me out if if otherwise, you know. Uh, but I did notice he doesn't follow me on Twitter. Maybe he never followed me on Twitter. Um, so maybe, you know, none of this drama is actually a thing, right? And we're cool and we're clean. Listen, I hope Paris does well. Like I, like I said, I'm one of the people hoping Paris does well this year. Um, because you know, they've been fighting against the odds. First of all, their fucking team has already been underpaid compared to comparatively to other Overwatch League teams for first of all, uh, second of all, their fucking GM went to the hospital because of stress due to the team and setting it up like that in itself is pretty fucking terrible. And third of all, now they're getting a bunch of hate for losing to tier two teams and stuff like that and not playing too well. So they, they've been fighting it. They've been fighting against a lot of shit. You know what I'm saying? Like they've been fighting against a lot of shit. 
I hope they do well. Um, I think it's funny what David said, because David said just something, I don't know, just like, hey, yeah, we're not screaming LA Valiant, by the way. We blacklisted them <laughs> <laughs> when they obviously can't even play. It's fucking great, dude. Absolute legends. I just wanted to kind of address this before we started. Maybe we'll make a highlight video out of it, um, if it's worth it. Uh, but I don't know if we even need to talk about it much more. Is there anything I'm missing on this entire subject? I don't know. But I don't like think some of these American Tornado players beating all it's these like a teams. Bunch of so apparently that that's not actually true. Apparently that's, that, that was kind of the joke is that unfortunately he just kind of, you know, I do the same thing. I can't blame him. He kind of overstated the situation. He like, uh, you know, talked it up based on what it actually isn't, right? I'm sure he, like they were beating a couple of Overwatch League teams, but he said 80% of all Overwatch, like that is a ridiculous amount of, that's, that's what? <laughs> that's fucking like 18 teams or something, right? Like, or, or 16 teams or something fucking ridiculous. I don't know what the, I don't the know what 80% of 20 is. I. Yeah, <laughs> Are you kidding me? I can't just. <laughs> it's sixteen, right? Sixteen, okay, there you go. sixteen. <laughs> okay, it's impossible <laughs> to beat all sixteen teams because other teams are in Korea and stuff like that. So obviously, what he was saying can't, can't be accurate, right? <laughs> so that was the meme back at him, and I think American Tornadoes is like a tier two team that is reputable to some degree. Like they have some people that I don't know. I don't know if Cucumber's still on the team. It was the guy that we were talking about before, uh, Kaluj, that just kind of has no chance back at, to get an Overwatch League um, for him because of the fact of whatever he's done in the past. I'm not going to get into it too much, you know, because it feels like whenever you take a side on this scenario, you're going to get somebody upset based on whatever what, what Kaluj has done in the past. So we're just not going to talk about it. However, they are good players, right? This team is full of good players. And um, it's no surprise that they would be an Overwatch League team, even if they did, right? So that's what Dan is saying, or that's what Dan is saying, I guess, specifically. And I guess I can, like, kind of agree with it. You know what I mean? Like, I guess if you lose to a Tier 2 team, then that, that stinks. Uh, but it's maybe more reputable. The thing is, I, I really don't feel like, you know, maybe eventually you could start winning games. But if you're already, in my head, if you're already losing games uh, versus Tier 2 teams... Like, in my head, that's just a, that's a sucky situation to be in, dude. That is a, I don't, it's not to say that I've never, I don't even know if I've ever been in that situation. I think Atlanta Rain, for example, I don't know if we've ever, like, lost a scrim to a Tier 2 team. Maybe somebody can uh, remind me if, if some Tier 2 team wants to call me out or whatever on the situation. I, I'm not even trying to, like, brag or anything like this. This is, like, me trying to, like, recollect so I can give my personal take on this, I suppose. I don't think we've ever, on the Atlanta Reign, have ever lost to a Tier 2 team, though, like an Academy team or whatever, right? Maybe our own Academy team, because our own Academy team was fucking legit and actually really, really good, right? Um, but I don't think we've ever lost to, like, a like you know, a Tier 2 team, like, what, Envy at the time or, or, or whatever. Like, we had legit good scrims versus them, but I don't think we've even counted the scrim bucks up to a lost scrim, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think that's ever been the case. Now, that's what I mean in that we've always been in this confident mind state, right? Where I feel like as an Overwatch League team, it's important to be in this confident mind state. And if you're losing teams or losing to teams in tier two, that is just not good for the fucking confidence. And I think this uh, ties in very well to our next topic, by the way, in LA, in the Valiant or Valorant scene, in which that some of these players, I think, just pay too much attention to social media, right? I think in my case, it's like part of my job now, like paying attention to social media, responding to criticism you know, doing all this kind of, like, this is a part of my job. Whereas if you're a pro player, you don't have to do these things. You don't have to go look at Twitter. You don't have to go look at Reddit. You don't have to go look at your news sources or whatever, right? You just have to focus on you and your team. Um, so to me, whenever this happens, and I don't know if this is just based on my own insecurities or whatever, uh, it, like, whenever I did that kind of stuff, it was just based out of insecurities, right? It was, this is, this is projecting. I'm, I'm just, like I said, I'm just projecting on the Dan um, and then Hiko when we talk about that. But I feel like this is just kind of people projecting, players projecting their own uh, self-doubt or whatever on social media. Like, you don't need to tweet these things, bro. I think somebody, I think somebody talked about this before. I don't want to shit on Dan at all. Like, I don't, I hope that's not the part, I hope people don't get that out of this, right? I, I feel like projecting, you know, your issues or whatever on social media or saying like, oh, I'm going to be the best player in the fucking world on Twitter or whatever. These are pretty juvenile ways of th doing things. You know what I'm saying? I feel like most people that tweet these kind of things are pretty young, uh, pretty unexperienced, pretty much people that uh, don't really have much self-awareness, I suppose. 
And that's, I mean, that's sure that's bright coming from me or whatever. That's funny coming from me, but that's my, that's what I mean. That's what I learned after this, right? Because I think there's a study saying, I don't know if I have the actual study up, but the study said something along the lines of like, if you are a person that tweets something, right? Once you tweet those, that thing that like, oh, I'm so motivated right now. Oh my God, I'm going to be such a good player. Once you tweet those things, right? Then your brain gets like a dopamine rush, right? I don't know if, if somebody could help me out and actually fact check me here, but like your brain gets like a small dose of dopamine saying like, oh, I already accomplished my goal, even though I just tweeted my goal, right? I think that's a thing, right? I don't know if Max and Anthony can, can I, have never I don't think you guys know this. much about it. No. Yeah, I, 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 it's, it's a small thing that I heard. It's a small thing I heard that like people get a, like a dope, like they think they did something subconsciously without actually doing it yet because they tweeted about it, right? So you're saying like they don't actually go do it? No, yeah, it's like the thing when, with, when people do like New Year's uh, resolutions, right? Where people are like, oh, I'm going to lose all this weight. And then they're like, oh, I'm so, we're going to do this, man. And then they're like, oh, I already did it, right? I don't know. I, I don't know if that's the actual thing, but that's why I kind of stopped tweeting uh, last year in Overwatch League and stuff like that is because like I figured like that's kind of true. I was like, I didn't really want even the chance of potentially, I don't know, just like fucking myself over mentally or something like that if I tweet something, you know? It's like not really something that I wanted to dig down in. So I, if anything, I respect Dan's for, or Dan, uh, for for tweeting these things, for, for tweeting out. Because he's kind of been that person for Paris to reply to a lot of people to talk to Twitter and talk to Reddit and stuff like that. You don't need to do that, bro. I'm sorry. You just don't need to, though. You just, just, I recommend you stay away from Twitter and Reddit. This is the number one thing I think all pro players should do. If you don't, if you're not getting paid to stream or if you're not getting paid to be a controversial figure, fucking don't do it. Like, I don't know. Like, what else can you fucking say? Like, you don't need to do this kind of shit, bro. Like, you can just stay to yourself, be to yourself. Uh, be, I don't know, unless you, unless you want a future career in content creation or something like that, there's no point in, in, in doing this kind of, it's like how people say like deadlifters or like whatever, or bodybuilders say that you shouldn't be deadlifting if you're not a bodybuilder because you'll get injured. It's like that. You shouldn't be tweeting fucking, uh, potentially controversial shit if you're, uh, not a content creator, right? Like there's no point you're not getting anything back. Hey, like you said before, it feels good though. It doesn't feel good though. You get this. I bet you, Dan, and this is, I don't know if this is in this situation, but at least from personal experience, tweeting these type of things would just tilt me. Like, or just tilt you. Like, you'd just be like, you'd be like, you get it off your chest. You'd be like, oh man, I feel so good. And then boom, fucking negative response after negative response after negative response for like 80% of the responses. Like, that shit right there is the culprit of whatever mental thing that is going on for you, probably, I'd imagine. Yeah, now shoot. that's projecting, like I said. That's just projecting. I don't know what's going on through Dan's head. Uh, and he probably would deny this because of the fact that obviously he's a pro player right now. Um, and you wouldn't want to obviously admit that you're having mental struggles or whatever. Um, but I can't imagine that like these type of things are good for your mental, bro. Like regardless, you know, especially if you're already doing so poorly in scrims, just shut up and grind, you know, shut up and fucking grind. Yeah. I'm not like, this isn't like a negative thing. This is like, I'm telling you potentially good advice because this is where I fucked up in the past and where I didn't shut up and grind. You know, I just kept talking and kept talking and kept talking and I stopped grinding less and less and less and less. And then that just became a epitome of, of not like bad work, like bad work ethic, basically. Um, so I think the, the idea behind being quiet, keeping your nose down, fucking tunneling, focusing up and grinding. I think that is actually the best way that Paris Eternal can make this comeback because he's kind of looking like an embarrassment otherwise, I think, unfortunately for him. Um, it also doesn't but, help that he used the old problem meme oh yeah oh no that <laughs> that is a fucking uh, that's a bit of a i don't want to i'm not going to roast his meme choice okay max we can't roast you you, no, you go this is a personal like attack that's... this is a, you're you are personally attacking him right now max how do you you are personally attacking him right now i think buddy. i need to attack his meme choice there that you can't use that meme right. right now anymore it's just dead it's just a dead meme is what you're saying yeah Feels bad, man. Feels bad. Um, we're moving to Valorant, though, since this is on the same topic. Uh, I wanted to kind of talk about it uh, to this degree, right? So, because this was along the same lines of what we just talked about, because this is along the same lines of Overwatch League, right? 
for those that don't know, in Valorant, right? In the Valorant scene, and I know as an Overwatch League fan, you're like, oh, no, 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 Valorant. Oh, no, it's so boring, right? So, but this is why Valorant is exciting, is because of shit like that just happened, okay? Chemicals called Hiko a baiter on stream, a.k.a. the player, for those that don't know, pro Valorant player Chemicals is a 17-year-old player for Immortals, which is probably the top three slash top four, at least top five. I think people could say consensus top five team in NA Valorant right now. He was asked who should be replaced on 100 Thieves by his chat room. His chat, he was just streaming for one of the first times ever. He would just, he was going around his business or whatever. Um, and then unknowingly, what would happen after? He responded to that chat member asking who should be replaced on 100 Thieves. He said, probably Dicey or maybe just. Uh, Hiko's just the, the biggest fucking baiter in the entire of, of all time, dude. Like, that was, like, actually the quote he said. That was literally what he said. He's like, Hiko's the biggest baiter of all time. Then afterwards, he was asked who should be replaced on FaZe, and then he didn't give any names specifically. He just said that, you know, Corey and Baby Bay should stay on the team. Um, but I don't think he could have seen <laughs> what happened afterwards <laughs> because this drama was immediately taken to fucking Reddit. Immediately taking to Twitter, and Hiko replied, he said, uh, the good old classic meme in Twitch chat, right? My name Hiko, forehead, I'm a baiter, forehead, I'll meet you at the bomb site, forehead, a little bit later. So obviously this is a good old classic meme, uh, like the Sinatra, and my girl are drowning, meet you at the spawn door meme, a couple of these other copy pastas that are kind of put, thrown around in the chat, right? That's what happens, that's how it is, right? Uh, so obviously Hiko wanted to rebuttal against this, right? So this is my take on the situation. I kind of want to run down each party's, uh, <laughs> see, that's what exactly what he said. Uh, this is, uh, I just want to run down exactly what, like each train of thought, I suppose, from Chemicals train of thought and POV and Hiko's POV. And then I want to give my personal opinion at the end of it, right? Because as a pro, as an ex-professional player, I feel like I have something that I can at least contribute to this conversation to where I would think that, you know, what I would do in the situation or whatever, right? We, do, we can talk about that later, right? So really my back and forth too. I fucking love it. Like I said, this kind of shit is what we live for. That's what our show is a fucking bout. This kind of shit is awesome to hear about, to be honest with you. Um, and it kind of makes me a little tingly inside talking about, it, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, first of all, this is basically trash talk from chemicals. Like if you don't see it as such, I don't know, because even if he didn't mean it to be trash talk, it is pretty much as close to trash talk as you can get by saying that they should replace team that is not usually something that you see that is not something that you usually in the current professional scene from professional players you do not see people say that tom brady should be replaced or whatever right you shouldn't you don't in nfl you don't see people saying that oh drew Brees needs to be replaced oh whatever like you do every now and again but usually you do see that from players that aren't at the top of their game, from players that are just defensive players, like with an ego or, or something, right? That's kind of how it works in the NFL. Usually you don't see that kind of trash talk to star players uh, very often, right? Um, so this is obviously direct trash talk, even if he didn't intend it to be. He's trying to call Hiko, Hiko out for kind of being the last alive, basically. Is, is, if for those of you that don't know what being a baiter is, I don't know if I, I feel like I should explain this to people that don't. Uh, baiting in Counter-Strike and fucking Call of Duty and Valorant is pretty much a situation where you use another player on your team, right, to go in first and attract attention and then to come in second and get the kill afterwards or just not even go in at all and let your teammate die and not do anything about it and kind of just, it's called a bait, right? You're using them as like shark bait almost, right? That's kind of the situation that 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 is in, that, that he's calling out Hiko for being in, right? Um, and... My take on this, or the, the 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 reason that this isn't that this is true, and then also is kind of an overstatement at the same time, is because Hiko plays Sova, right? And Sova in Valorant is a very much so slow character that is not an entry player, right? Like a duelist, right? The duelists in the games like Raze, like Reyna, some of these guys are very are very good. A lot of the characters with flashes, these kind of things with their own escape, like Jet or whatever. Like these characters are duelists, right? The entire purpose of the kit of some of these characters in here or whatever you want to call them is literally to get a kill and to have some form of escape, to have some form of flashbang, to have some form of stun or whatever, right? That's the entire purpose of playing a duelist is so that you can win 
the gunfight a little bit easier with your kit, right? So you can utilize your kit in that way. Sova's kit is not to duel, really. It's just kind of a supportive character, right? You have your shock dart, right? One of your abilities to just deal damage, to do whatever. Sinatra's known for being good at this in in, um, in Valor, although it doesn't play Sova as much uh, because of Reyna, obviously, when she was OP. Anyways, you have this character that just kind of does chip damage, right? You do damage so that characters are easier to kill in the bomb site when you have specific placements or whatever, right? Then you have his recon uh, bolt or whatever that, that sticks on walls and allows you to see a large area of the map if it's not broken where the players are in said map, right? So that's what that kind of does. And then you have his ult, which is a very slow... You, you only sit there and you fucking fucking, I don't know, you, you you can't move at all, you have three shots of it, but you can hit anybody on pretty much any side of the map from, like, a certain range, right, through walls, through whatever, and it has, like, a charge-up time, right, and then you also have his, his drone, which, Sova, his character doesn't move, he activates a, uh, like, a recon drone thing that flies up in the air and lasts, like, upward, I don't know how many seconds it lasts, it lasts a few seconds, it flies across the map, and you can mark where people are, whatever, but while you're in drone form, you can't actually move around or do anything, right? You can you, Your teammates can go in off said drone, but you, your character, cannot actually do anything while the drone is active, right? You can just re pilot the drone around, basically, right? So Sova's kit does not allow him to be a duelist, right? That's kind of how Sova's kit is. You can't really blame Hiko for not going in first like a duelist like Reyna or whoever else would kind of do because he doesn't have escape ability, he doesn't have flashbangs or whatever, right? Like, that's not what his character does, right? So, that's not necessarily just being an apologist for, for Hiko. That's just kind of how Sova works, to be honest with you. He, that's not his role, right? So, this is kind of an interesting scenario because it's he, he's calling out Hiko for being a baiter, and listen, there is evidence not necessarily of Hiko being a baiter but of always he's kind of always the one last alive uh for 100 thieves right this is kind of the situation that's why it became this meme like Hiko said my name Hiko I'm a baiter I'll meet you at the bomb site a little bit later that's how that meme came apart is that in games chat plat chat or whatever so it's usually just taken as a meme are literally calling out Hiko in the game because he's late to bomb sites or because he's not really you know, because he, he he's always, like, the last alive, right? He, even though he's not always the last alive, right? When you're watching the games, you notice, you're like, oh, man, the game's already almost over. Oh, what? He goes alive still. What the fuck? And this happens, like, four or five rounds in a row or whatever, or just, like, repeatedly. And people are like, oh, man, he's a baiter. He's a fucking baiter, man. And I don't even necessarily think that's entirely true, right? But that's kind of the situation why he's kind of going on this and the hype train of calling Hiko a baiter, basically. It's just the giant hype train, right? Um, and I don't think that it's necessarily a good idea for our chemicals to say this, of course. I think Hiko talked about this on, on his stream. Hiko was talking about how, as an up-and-coming player, you and really a nobody is what he called them. He called, he called chemicals a nobody. He said... You know, as an up-and-coming nobody slash player or whatever, you should probably not kind of burn these bridges with players, and you shouldn't be really trash-talking players specifically on other teams um, outside of the game or whatever, right? That's what he said, right? Because Hiko himself has never really trash-talked, I, I don't think. Maybe he has in, in Counter-Strike, and I'm not remembering right, but, I mean, obviously, he, he's been around for a while. I could remember. He's, like, 30 years old or some shit now, so he's definitely probably been on the other side as well. That's what he said. Like, maybe he, when he was younger... You know, maybe he was on that side of the trash. Like, that's why he's touching on this. He's like, yes, I got burned for stuff like this that happened before. Hiko got directly burned for trash talk uh, against other players or whatever. Because, look, you never know who will be your... Like, I agree. You never know who will be your teammate in a year from now. In two years from now or whatever, right? You never know. So, what Chemicals is betting on the situation, what Chemicals is kind of is betting on, is that Hiko will not be in the scene in a year or two. That is the way I see. Or 100 Thieves, because I imagine 100 Thieves players and, and their teammates or whatever are also kind of not liking chemicals for this statement. I think Hiko probably more so. Um, but I think he's kind of betting on Hiko not being in the scene in a few years, right? Which that probably, that that might not, might, but that may be the case. That might not be the case. I don't think we can we can say so. I think it's pretty unfair to Hiko to say so at this early on because he's, you know, he's a little bit older. But at the same time, people have kind of transitioned into playing professional for longer periods of time. So maybe we'll see Hiko in a few years, and he is still a solid player. Um, however, you know, th th this situation is kind of interesting to me because he's right, right? Like, you can burn bridges with players. when, Like, I've done it, right? In Overwatch League, I've done that fucking same thing. In Overwatch League, I... 
Uh, first of all, I, I called Cruz a feeder on the stage. That was that was strike number one. Obviously, then the Paris Eternal guys fucking hated me after that. I don't think Cruz individually hated me, but I bet none of those players wanted to play with me on a team after that, right? So first of all, that's a burnt bridge with Paris Eternal, right? When you look at it that way. Then secondly, I uh, tried out for Team USA, right? They, they, I didn't make the team, right? So then afterwards, myself, Gator, you know, some of these Atlanta guys didn't make the team. So I was all charged up in emotions after that, and we just beat Dallas Fuel, right? And then I on stage called out Coach Arrow for for not picking up the Atlanta Rain players um, for the World Cup team, right? So that's what I said on stage um, to Coach Arrow. So there you go, strike two. Dallas Fuel no longer can join that team probably, and their players probably hate me after trash talking their head coach, even though I heard behind the scenes they, they did not have good relationships, right? But regardless, right? Dallas Fuel strike down. Then I got word that people uh, that that the World Cup people. Um, that worked for LA Gladiators, that worked for Washington Justice. Some of those guys uh, did not like what I said about Coach Arrow because they worked with the World Cup, right? So this snowballed, me talk, me trash-talking Coach Arrow, the Dallas Fuel head coach, and also the person who didn't select me for World Cup, then snowballed into um, you know people that were in like general man- manager positions, like only not not many, but like a few, right? In general manager positions for a few teams that did not want to work with me after the situation because of what I said about Coach Arrow, and I got a lot of backlash from people that didn't like what he said because I doubled down. The reporter that was talking to me, I'm not going to get into that too much. It was kind of a funny situation because I'm not mad at them. People were saying I got baited by that reporter um, that kind of like egged me on to even trash talk them more and call them a bad, or I like I called them an incompetent coach through that interview, basically. Um, so that kind of snowballed. So, right. So that if you look at it that way, right? Uh, Eternal in season two, Burned Bridge, right? Pairs, uh, Dallas Fuel, season two, Burned Bridge, right? Then you have GM of, uh, I mean, I, you can kind of, I can kind of just say, like Annalyn, uh, Ballin, the, the, the World Cup G- GM slash general manager, Burned Bridge, right? That's one right there, gone, right? So, from what I just said in two two instances, I just burned three bridges, right? I could never join these teams pretty much. I mean, maybe I could after they get fired or whatever or moved on or whatever, right? Like these things do happen too. But my reputation changes based on these things. So for chemicals in this situation, it's kind of like not, this is a little bit on that extreme spectrum because when I said these things, right, I kind of was in an emotionally high state of mind, right? Like I think you have to also bear in mind the context, I would only say these things like I call Cruz a feeder during when we had hundreds and hundreds of people in the crowd that I wanted to appease that I felt like an emotional high. I was like, ah, like fucking batshit crazy on some sort of fucking thing on like some some dopamines on stage. Right. So that already happened in that context. Right. Then you also have me shit talking coach arrow in context in that we were going into Dallas fuel playing that game, the Atlanta Reign, we were like, oh my God, we want to fucking kick these guys' asses because they didn't pick up myself, Gator, Fried, Hawk, whatever. All these, I don't, Hawk was not in the season, by the way. But anyways, they didn't They didn't pick up any of our players on that team for World Cup, for the American World Cup team. Um, so in that case, we were like, oh, we want to get a revenge on Coach Arrow for not picking us up, right? So obviously in that state, we wanted to also not only beat them, but kind of rub it in their faces that we beat them because of the fact that we were like, oh, we're fucking, we were better than you today and we're going to trash talk you after the game's over, right? That's just kind of trash talk you during and after or whatever. And they put up a good fight. I do want to point out, Dallas Fuel actually put up a fucking good fight versus us. It was like a map five game or something. It was actually a close series, right? Um, but you have to bear in mind, like that state of mind, I was in a very emotionally high state of mind, right? Whereas Chemicals in this situation is just kind of chilling. He's just playing games. He's just like, I'm just playing games, first time streaming, whatever, dude. And then chat member asks, who should 100 Thieves replace, right? That's what happens in this situation. Chemicals says they should replace Hiko. And he's kind of in a more relaxed situation during this. So he's not in a highly, you know, emotional state of mind. I think he's just kind of a teenager that, that likes to shit talk or whatever, or or doesn't even necessarily like to shit talk. It's just kind of first things that come to mind. You kind of spur things out when you're younger, right? That's just kind of what happens, right? But what Hiko's saying is that Hiko's pretty much saying that he should not say these things, right? Because it will get you fucked and blackballed in the future, potentially, from other teams, right? But I think, I think this situation is kind of interesting because I, I kind of want to talk about Hiko's response. And this is probably going to piss a couple people off, right? This is probably going to piss people a couple off. Um, but listen, this is kind of a... 
oh man, this is going to be tough because there's going to be Hiko fanboys that are going to be mad at this, right? And I'm projecting for sure, like I said, about the Dan situation. This is literally just a project projection and this might not just, this might not be about what Hiko's mind state is, right? This not, might not be on where Hiko's mind state is. But I am surprised, me personally, that uh, somebody that is 30 years old, right? Somebody that his experience, somebody that's been in the scene for a long time, whatever, would seemingly get offended at these type of things, right? Would seemingly be uh, upset about this kind of thing, right? Because, and you can say, Hiko can say he's not or whatever, and he can be, he, you, you can get his opinion or whatever on it. That's fine. Get his opinion. Go find his opinion, right? But this is my opinion, right? My opinion is that Hiko responding to this in such fashion, going to Twitter, talking about a meme, right? Replying to like 20 that were either sucking him off or talking about the, the joke in some way, right? Like, that's kind of what happened, right? They were, he, they were replying in those comment sections to what he said in a laughing way. He was kind of mad laughing back. But obviously, he was fixated on this for upwards of like 30 minutes or something like that, right? He was obviously fixated on the scenario with Chemicals calling him a beta, right? So obviously, he, Chemicals kind of struck a nerve, right? Chemicals kind of struck a nerve in Hiko into where he responded in such fashion. And even in that day right he even sorry i'm lagging a little bit even went to go sh stream later in that day and talk about the situation so obviously chemicals was in hiko's head for upwards of a day basically right and this could like i said this could be projections this might actually not be what happened for hiko but you also have to bear in mind hiko's situation for this i don't think we can just hard roast chemicals because he is a young kid and he doesn't know better right he's 17 he's just fucking talking to his chat or whatever right he doesn't know any better and then boom Hiko responds to it and then also is kind of tilted, right? I mean, obviously, like he just got, he literally had somebody just, another professional player in a top five team in any Valorant go and trash talk him. Like, of course he's going to be upset, right? I just figured somebody like Hiko would not be as easily offended by this type of thing and would just kind of ignore it, right? Because I think that's what a professional does in this situation. I'm not a professional, right? And obviously, I, I mean, Hiko's a professional too, but in my head, whenever I think of somebody that is, that is going to reply to trash talk or whatever, usually this is done through the in-game scenario, right? Through through shitting on somebody in the game for absolutely dominating the lobby or whatever. Usually that is how people, professionals, respond to trash talk or whatever, right? Um, and I don't think that Hiko necessarily had a bad response. Like I said, this is probably something that I would have done. But I just kind of want to go through the mental state that he potentially could be in, that I would be in if I was in this situation, right? That's all I want to kind of do. Hopefully I don't, upset any Hiko fans, but that probably won't be the case because he does have a lot of fans. Like, Hiko is an awesome player, awesome person. I fucking love him. Um, but, you know, like, I'm just kind of trying to, I don't know, talk about the situation because I thought it was pretty funny, dude. I thought it was pretty funny. I just thought his response was a little bit petty. Um, and obviously, in the first place, is stupid for doing so, but I fucking love that he did just because of the fact that, uh, you know, it's more shit for us to talk about, right? The... I guess the ultimate decision is, do you want more clout or do you want to be professional? Which one's That's true. more worth well, it? I, I don't even think he goes about clout in this situation. That's what I'm saying. I don't, I don't even think it's about clout necessarily. I think it's just that, he, that, that chemical has struck a nerve with him. And because obviously this kind of thing has been affecting Hiko for potentially a little while with people in chat saying this meme or whatever. Um, you know, and it probably doesn't I, have that I much. Do you want to like... It probably doesn't have that much strain on the subconscious, but it definitely is there, right? Like, obviously, he wouldn't tweet about it or whatever if it wasn't on his mind, right? Mm -hmm. Even if it's in a negative or positive way, it's on his mind, in which that's pretty obvious because he wouldn't fucking tweet about it otherwise. Um, but I think Hiko's already like a 10,000 viewer streamer or something like that. He doesn't need clout. You know, he's already got it. He's, he could be a streamer if he wanted to, right? But Chemicals, on the other hand, he, there was no reason for him to say all that. Yeah, there was literally no reason... There People was no reason besides it. a chat member. A <laughs> chat member was asking him, and he's just kind of a dumb, like, 17-year-old kid that, that just fucking was like, oh, oh, they should replace fucking Dicey and Hiko. And I'm just like, oh, buddy, he's going to get some hate for this, dude. <laughs> he's about to get so much hate for this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. It's funny. It's just funny to me, dude. The overall, it's just, like, obviously, I'm not in the situation. I'm not as good as these guys at Valorant, obviously. Um, I've had one big question, though. Is will you uh, ever get Cruz on here? I tried. He hasn't responded. He's ghosted me. So. Wow. Arrow did. Me I will. I do want to say Arrow did message me. Arrow did message me, and he he said, "I love your show, um, and keep it up." So after all the on. trash talk I said to Arrow, after all of that <laughs> shit I sent, Arrow has still somehow been the better man in the situation, and 
I asked him if he wanted to come on. He hasn't responded yet, but he actually reached out to me and saying he likes the show and stuff like that. Good. So, hey, hey, hats off to Arrow for being just a good sport that, overall, that's bro. What Honestly, professional is. that actually is because he never responded to me. He never said anything back. He never fed any fuel to the fire with, with uh, me shitting on him or anything like that. He wow. never responded. He was the bigger man. He just kind of took it in stride and never looked at social media, which probably is what you should fucking do if you're a professional, right? Like that is the mo- utmost, like uh, hats, like I said, hats off to him for being such a good sport with that kind of shit. Like nobody does that, bro. That is, everybody's juvenile, young as fuck. Nobody knows any better, right? Um, and, uh, and he obviously took the high road, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Matt, what's going on? All right. Yeah. Anyway, next topic. Halo so anyway. TV series. Big. Okay. <laughs> uh, basically, it's going to air in quarter one, 2022. I've been looking Wait, what forward is this? to Wait, it. Explain again. Explain again. It's a Halo TV series. It's exactly oh, what? what it sounds like. You play Halo? What the? F- Are they? Bro. What? Is it going to be live action? That's a good question. I couldn't find shit about the show. Supposedly, it's already like 55 to 60% filmed of the first season Ooh. before COVID happened. It was supposed That's to be, be like. like- what Did anybody want this? Of RVB? Uh, I wanted this, and I don't know if it's well, going to be anything like, like Red versus Blue. Well, Anthony, do you remember back in the day when uh, there was the trailers and there was like the footage of that one Halo like live action thing that was supposed to come out? You know what I'm talking I about? Do remember that? Yeah. Yeah, there yeah. was like the one. They were like in this giant open field, and there's like a bunch of Covenant and like whatever, and there's like running around. Like it was like, like there was a couple live action things that were done early on in Halo, right? But never something like this, I suppose. There is good Halo, like animated and live action. I think it can be yeah. done well. It's just a matter of did they do it well. Who is the guy Whoa. who does like all those special effect videos? What I don't do you know mean? the name. For for Red versus Blue or for what? No, like just in general on YouTube. He was like famous for doing special effects stuff. I I think I remember. I, him I don't know. Like a, I don't know. Maybe, thing too. maybe we can but find him or whatever. No, I, I'm just, I'm asking. That's why I'm wondering. Like, are people actually interested in it? Because Halo's been a dying like thing for like a while, right? I. Yes, Halo's been fucking dying. They keep re-releasing the same game every fucking year, like Call of Duty. But it's like, I don't know. Like, I love Halo, right? But it's not the same thing as it was, as popular as it was years ago. Am I wrong? I think. If you go into like the Xbox community, it's huge still. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Maybe I'm just blind then. All right. Never mind. Ignore me. I'm stupid. I'm stupid. <laughs> I'm stupid. All right. Whatever. Keep talking about it. I want to know about back, this. Man. And oh, right. is, <laughs> apparently the series was like announced in 2013 and I just never fucking heard about it until like literally recently. And uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, did you guys play? Like, gonna... Did you guys play all the Halos? Do you guys know anything about I, competitive Halo? I mean, I know that it's a lot of movement based or something. Like, I know that they're really good at movement in Halo. And I mean, I played Halo Reach, uh, played Halo 3, uh, played Halo 2. I mean, that's like my experience with it. Like, nothing serious, though. I wasn't good at Halo. I played all of them. I tried playing, I tried playing that Halo Remastered. I mean, you tried playing that quite a bit, too. But controller, play, it was one of those games where controller players were just just had the advantage and you just couldn't compete. You know, I do hate. Oh, that. I hate any game that has do. controller advantage. Man, why do they? What do you say, man? Put crossplay in this. No, I, I they, usually you have to like nerf controllers to a really bad degree in order for PC players to have like a solid, you know, standing. Right. I mean, have I you know. seen like how Halo handles uh, if you're playing on a controller? Like, even if your crosshair no, isn't on the guy. But you're like It'll close, and you and you take damage. It'll literally put the crosshair on the person for you. <laughs> that sounds about right. Much. It, it's it's pretty. Sounds stupid. about right. I love it, dude. I love that Halo is it's getting its own PC series now. Oh yeah, I, I'm yeah. pretty excited. We'll see what happens. I mean, I'm, gonna, well, I'm gonna 100 watch it. Halo is, is probably Paramount one of the plus. That's what do you mean? What's Paramount? Isn't it just Paramount, the same company? You're gonna have There's to buy something sites? like Disney Plus. Yeah, it's, this is the oh this is the new cable. Eventually, there'll be a bundle oh, for it. No. Oh, Everyone has God. to like buy one account and then trade it with a whole bunch of people. No, no, it's a new streaming service, dude. Why? Oh, I mean, I, 
I don't I mean, I understand, I suppose, because it's better than cable. I mean, it is better than cable, but... I'll trade like, you my Netflix so for your Disney Plus, Max. Yeah, there, there's oh, already, there's already, already so many, bro. From someone else. There, there's, like, there's like Hulu, there's HBE, fucking S or whatever. There's goddamn YouTube, there's Twitch, there's fucking... There's like 200 billion HBO Max, fucking... Like Peacock or something. Peacock? What the fuck is this? Peacock. It's, it's NBC's Christ, thing. Dude. That sounds exactly. That sounds like a porn fucking website, dude. <laughs> peacock, right? Like what? Yeah, like just type they peacock. Taken it first. I bet if you type P, the letter P and then cock afterwards, you probably would be taken to a porn site. Don't do that. Don't do that. I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, Anthony, don't do. It. You're gonna get a virus. You're gonna. <laughs> <he's getting laughs> no, just just go straight to the the regular peacock TV. Oh, it's oh. just peacock. Like, like just typing P like cock like C O C K. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just, just go right. straight to the, the TV oh. service. They even bought that domain. Wow. Good for them, dude. Good for them. Um, <laughs> is that it, though, dude? This fucking goddamn Halo series? I'm excited for it. I, I think Halo is one of the more badass like universes, to be honest with you. No, yeah. I, I really I love is. the lore in Halo games and Halo everything more than anything mm-hmm. else. Like, I read the books as a fucking kid, and it was the only books I would read. Oh. It's, 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 got, pretty sick. it's got good lore. It's like a less serious version, or like not like a less serious, like a less dark version of like Warhammer, like 40k almost. You know what I'm talking about? Like Warhammer 40k has a serious ass universe that's fucking pretty sick. Scary pretty ass nasty. universe. Yeah, it is. Uh, all right, we can move on though a bit. Uh, Yampy, uh, I just want this is a, I'm gonna talk about this slightly because I think Max is something more important. Um, and we're already, you know, 46 minutes into the show. So Yampy is joining Team Liquid, though, and Curry is joining T1. So if you don't remember, Yampy is the player in Counter-Strike playing for Team Ents. And Yampy was banned when he was like 12 years old, a 13-year-old, something like that. VAC banned, so he could not compete in any majors or top events for Valve, right? So or in Valve tournaments in Counter-Strike. So basically, what Yampy decided, he was like deciding if he wants to either keep fighting Valve, which he probably still is, uh, because he was suing Valve in court for potential loss of gains and stuff like that. So he was suing Valve, um, and then was keep, we kept trying to play Counter-Strike, basically, right? And that's still going on. I don't know what the actual resolution of that is going to be or is. However, he was deciding if he wants to go play Pro and Valorant, basically, right? So now he is. Now he's joining Valorant and joining uh, Team Liquid. Um, and now he's playing on that team. And that team, I think, has had some faults recently. We're trying to get Sliggy on, by the way. I think we're going to get Sliggy, the head coach of uh, Team Liquid, on sometime in the near future. I think he's a bit busy, obviously, because VCT has been going on. And I think it's even on right now. I don't know if I'm wrong or, or right about the scenario, but it's been going fucking on. So I imagine they're going hard. Um, but now he's joining Team Liquid. We'll see how he does. I think a lot of ex Counter Strike players have had success, and the guy's still young. So, hey, good luck to him. And then Curry is joining T1. Curry was the, was X, um, actually not X anything. He was a stand in for T1. He used to be a Counter Strike professional uh, or Counter Strike player. He was an up and coming player and now actually gets his full starting spot on T1. Um, so, let's see. I, I hope T1 does well. I hope they can perform, honestly. I think this team is exciting. Um, you know, now that they replace Braxton and the AZK, or going to rather, uh, this team might actually be competitive, right? This T1 team might actually be competitive. Uh, but yeah, we just want to touch on that real quick. Wanted to get some uh, updates in Valorant in that scene. So yeah, I mean, that's pretty good. That's, that's pretty cool, man. That's, that's pretty cool. Pretty but what cool. you think? I think you have something cooler, Max, right? I I beg to differ. It wasn't too uh, much. Oh my god! So dude, we dude. had. PlayStation State of Play. Um, I guess it's kind of like their version of uh, like the Nintendo Direct and stuff like that. Um, it was only 30 minutes, though, and only had 10 games, half of which probably weren't really uh, new games at all. It was just like PS5 updates. Look how the graphics are. Um, so there was like a Crash 4 PS5 update showcase. Um, a new game called Eternal, which kind of looks cool. It's like an alien third-person shooter thing that has like roguelite element stuff. Um, there's that dodgeball game again. I forgot yeah, what it's Nintendo. called. But <laughs> we learned that it has like battle royale mechanics to it. <laughs> dodgeball battle royale. Oh boy. Um, there was Sifu. Um, oh, people didn't really like that, that looked but cool. it looked pretty cool. It's like a martial arts kind of game. Uh, like Solar it. Ash, which is by the Hyperlight Drifter people. 
uh, Oddworld Soulstorm. I guess it's another Oddworld game with three or two point nine D gameplay. If oh, you've wow. heard of two point five D gameplay, now there's two point nine D out of nowhere. Um, there's a new Five Nights at Freddy's. Oh, it's a, <laughs> it's you, this one you actually have like a world to go around and get scared by little animatronics. <laughs> um, Kena Bridge of Spirits. I don't really care about that mm. game too much. Uh, Death Loop. Ooh. And finally, a Final Fantasy VII uh, remake. I guess free DLC. You can call it. It's basically yeah. updated graphics for PS5. And like a couple new missions with new characters and things like that, so it's it wasn't very exciting. Um, mostly just PS5 updates and things like that. I'm probably most well, looking forward to the Final Fantasy DLC. Um, what was the other guys thing? Man? See anything? What was, was the last thing on this list? Oh, you're spoiling it because it didn't actually oh! happen on the state of play. Oh, most fuck, important fuck. news today: I'm there's sorry. a Final Fantasy Seven mobile exclusive battle royale hey let's go let's go mobile baby. exclusive why <laughs> let's go hell yeah baby that's Did pretty this big need brain to i don't know about you it's called that final is, fantasy I mean, 7 first soldier if every you're mobile interested game, every mobile game that we, we that we've heard about hey right that's that a purpose of our show is to cover mobile games now i mean that's <laughs> That's the direction we're headed in, boys. I, I hate to break it to you guys, but uh, mobile games are where it's at, son. We're going to make our own mobile game. And it looks weird, too, because it looks like it has mob elements to it. Oh, so yeah. Not only is there a PvP, but there's also little mobs that you can take down while you're Ooh. playing. Yeah, I was wondering I what the fuck that is. And you also have know. to use your phone. Well, we, can, we can talk more about because I guess that wasn't in the state of play, like you said. Um, listen. What was better, PlayStation's uh, state of the uh, whatever state of play or Nintendo's Direct? What was what was better when you compare the two? In your guys' opinion, uh, I feel like I, I should get your opinion first before mine because mine's obviously going to be a hot take. It's because yours is wrong. <laughs> well, you're spoiling it. Nothing here was. You haven't said yours. Nintendo Direct is yeah, better. Nintendo. See, I disagree. Yeah, see, PlayStation you're wrong. wrong. PlayStation State of Play was better based on the fact they had more interesting games to me personally. Is that was, fair? Which ones? Most of these games were already known about. These are just newer trailers. Well, I didn't know about them. I had no idea these games existed. Whose fault is that? I mean, mine. But I, <laughs> I can still be more excited for it than fucking Nintendo's goddamn Mario 90 bajillion and fucking... Goddamn whatever else game they had. Dude, Mario Zelda Golf. fucking remake, bro. Mario Golf fucking bullshit ass trash fucking game. None of those are exciting. Dude. Which, They're just which one of these games is more exciting bullshit. than Mario Are you going to play Golf? any of these games, Dustin? Probably not. With? Probably not. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Maybe Deathloop. <laughs> de 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 I'm not a single player game person. I don't know. Sifu. Hey, Sifu looked pretty fun. That looked sick. It reminded me of Raid, the movie, where it's like, fucking uh, uh, punch. Uh, like it, it looked pretty Naruto. sick in that regard that was yeah that wasn't really naruto it was like actual fighting that was kind of cool uh death loop that looked like fucking like um what's it called dishonored like esque bioshock esque and you like bioshock don't you max don't you like were you a bioshock yeah. guy or no I, yeah I played bioshock infinity. was fucking good yeah infinity did you ever play uh bio was it bioshock 2 which one which one's the one with the big daddy you know what i'm saying big daddy uh, one and two, I think. I think it was one and two. Yeah. Anyway, Bioshock was pretty good. So I mean, Deathloop looks like Dishonored mixed of it. You know what I'm saying? I think it's another, made by another the same kind of people. Game. Yeah, Bethesda makes it, and uh, I think it was. Another, I don't remember the actual other company is. Arcane. Uh, yeah, Arcane. It looks better. It, this still looks better than Nintendo Direct to me, just because I'm not interested in any of the games besides fucking Metopia. Like if Metopia <laughs> to me is your best game from Nintendo Direct, everything here beats out the fucking water, son. That's all I'm trying to say, right? In this dodgeball game, okay, that game sucks dick. All right, we have to admit it does look better because for some reason Nintendo Direct actually like so good gameplay of it. They just like they didn't explain any of the mechanics, so we were just sat there confused what the fuck this shit is. <laughs> and then actually in the PlayStation State of Play, they described what the dodgeball game is. So just based on that fact alone, PlayStation. 
state of play actually shows what the fuck games are instead of just showing like shitty trailers like Nintendo Direct does, okay? This is just my personal hate with Nintendo. That's all this really is. This is all this conversation. Nintendo can suck a fucking ween with how they've been treating their fucking games for the past years, bro. That's all I'm trying to say. They're lame as shit, overrated, overhyped bullshit, okay? But do you own a PS4 or PS5 at all? Uh, no. <laughs> do you own a Switch? Yes. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking, I'm lagging too, dude, because of this fucking shit. God damn it, dude. Every goddamn time, dude. I don't know what's on my internet these days. But anyways, it's because of, it's obviously because Nintendo's upset and they're DDoSing my house. Obviously. Dang it, Reggie. Um, gonna talk about this thing if i stop lagging what the fuck man lec uh team could be potentially forced to sell their spot gentlemen lec team could potentially be forced to sell their spot i'll just talk about through the article that we found on gin x tv right so schlock i don't know how do you pronounce it actually schlock schlocky schlocka schlocka uh schalke schalke i think it is schalke oh you and your german uh I'm sorry. Yeah, I did take German, so I should actually know how to say this. Could be forced to sell LEC spot. Schalke. Okay, Schalke. My bad. Schalke 04. Could be forced to sell LEC spot as football team faces certain relegation. So basically, to summarize the scenario from this article, it's just that this team, their football team, their actual soccer team, right, in, the, in European German soccer, is terrible. It's fucking terrible, right? It's... Not necessarily their main source of revenue, but this is their big investment is in their football team, and it's pretty much dog shit right now, right? It's in the water. So this team is being transparent through social media and stuff like that, saying we potentially will have to sell our team during these COVID-19 times uh, because of the fact that they're just not doing too hot right now, right? So they had an AMA on the Twitch channel in February 24th uh, talking about this, was, which was literally yesterday. Um, and they're, they're pretty much saying that the COVID pandemic has exacerbated the club's financial situation. And it looks like it has to cut costs where it can, right? Um, so apparently this company can earn up to 20 million euros, which is like you for us. That's like what? $22 million or something like that. That's like, I think that's what it, I don't know what the actual equivalent exchange is, but it's like, it's more USD, right? Basically for selling the spot. Um, and apparently the fact that the, after this AMA, they were letting people know about this, right? So they are talking about how, this is a quote from them. They said, quote, due to having a fa to face possible relegation in the second Bundesliga, Bundesliga, Bundesliga. Uh, and not Bundesliga, uh, and not knowing when fans will be able to come back to the stadium, the club needs to look into all options to secure additional funding. So they're selling their LAC spot basically, or will potentially be selling it. They just basically put it on the market like, hey guys, we might and probably will be selling our LEC spot uh, just to make a little bit of extra dough, which is honestly pretty reasonable. I'm glad this is like the first time that we've heard like some sort of transparency with this kind of thing that actually makes sense, right? Like this is kind of, I'm glad we're hearing about it, right? This is actually the first like ownership change to potentially happen that they've actually been transparent and are being reasonable on like the fucking LA Valiant, which just were like, hey, we're moving China, boys! <laughs> right? Like, fucking hell, man. Fuck our players, man. Fuck our players, to China. dude. I hope, I hope they all end up good, though, like, on this on this team. I wonder if they change, like, I'm, I hope they change brands. Like, I gotta be real, I don't like European team branding. I know a lot of Europeans like it or whatever. But, like, Schalke like 04. Schalke, Schalke, Schalke 04. Like, that's a terrible fucking name, dude. <laughs> that's a terrible goddamn name. Like, it's just not a good... Maybe in German, that just sounds badass. And we don't know about it. True. I just don't like European soccer team branding or football team branding. I just, it's just not my shtig, right? It's like the British Hurricane uh, logo for, uh, or, or like the British, uh, what's it called? The London Spitfires in, um, in Overwatch League. People like their branding because it looks like a, like a soccer logo, like a European soccer team logo. But to me, it doesn't look that cool. Like, I, I kind of don't like it. I just don't like the European branding, I guess, of some of these teams. Anyways, I think there's better branding than this. I think I think we saw like on, so if you guys remember, if you guys know the four, four spin podcast, um, including Monte Cristo, Thorin, Richard Lewis, and they had Damon on it. Um, but they basically had these guys on the show where they talked about how teams like CLG, for example, Counter Logic Gaming, um, is one of the better like old school team branding names, but they're not they're like kind of perceived in the public reception to not be a profitable 
organization basically for to investors to invest in, right? Um, and that's kind of what they're talking about. Is like team names do matter, right? Team names do matter. I think this is kind of not really entirely related to it. By the way, I recommend the Four Horsemen podcast. Pretty fucking interesting. Uh, apparently, t- according to Daniel, the full name of the full team is the uh, Foosball uh, Club Gelshin Kirchen Kirsten Schalke. Oh four. I just fucking butchered that uh, entirely. Yeah, better than me. I, 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 I used to. I see. I can. I can speak some German here. Let's say Eins, right. zwei, dry, uh, fünf, vier. What is it? Vier than fünf. Sex, uh, oh. sieben, acht, neun, uh, and then that's all I remember. That's I ten. can only count to nine. Oh. You know. Yeah, I give up. I give up. Better than me. <laughs> I give up, dude. He could speak some Japanese for us, Max, sometime. Um, hey, all right, day. that's pretty. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it, though, for the news today. If our, is our guest ready? Are we are we good to go? I, our guest might be ready for us, boys. Um, so our guest today, so our guest today is a man who is uh, perpetually tilted, right? Someone who's frequently been a supporter of our show, but an awesome dude, a man who couldn't make it to Overwatch League, and the interview with him about it is our number one video, and that makes it makes us his number one fan. Samito, what's going on, bud? Hey, I, 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 I didn't know that was your uh, number one video. Well, we're built diff. Oh, hell yeah, bud. <laughs> dude, you, oh, I'm out of fucking focus. No, dude. <laughs> oh, my God. Scuff podcast, brother. Quick, Daniel. We, okay, I'm going to ask you a question real quick, uh, Samito, so Daniel can cut it off me and I can focus my camera. Yeah. Or I could just do this. Whatever. We're not going to do that. Um. Anyways, dude, how you doing, bro? Thanks for coming back on. Dude, First repeat for you, bud. Dude, thank you uh, for having me. I, I, love you. I love talking to you. I love the show. And, you know, I just any, anytime we can talk, I'm always game. Thanks, Samito, dude. It's good to see you, man. I heard you had a long stream yesterday. Was you, are you pretty tired? Are you pretty fucking worn out, dude? Uh, yes. I don't know. Sometimes, I mean, I think you'll get this, too. There are some days where you're just super tired, and then some days where you're yeah, just yeah. so in it that you can just go for hours. Like, that's like, I've only been able to really had that happen to me once, where I streamed for like 36, 37 hours straight. 36 Overwatch hours ranked. straight, dude? Overwatch ranked 37 hours straight. Why? 36. Why? Well, did you I get mean, good views? It was it was it for the views? It's pretty much what you're saying. I, honestly, I it was right when, right after Hanzo was met in like season eleven, and that was like right where my stream was first oh. growing. So I was really enjoying that. I was enjoying Hanzo meta, oh, okay. and then I went twelve hours, and I was like, "Well, I can't stop now because my sleep cycle will be broken." So then I went another twelve <laughs> hours, and I was like, oh "Well, God. I can't stop now because then my sleep cycle will be extra." I forget how the math worked, and then I just like hard committed <laughs> and i'm sure my dad Dude. i called my dad and then i was like dad i've been streaming for 27 hours can you get me fazoli's which is like this little italian pasta and uh, he brought it to me yeah dude i ate it he brought me food and i i, I think i know during the 36 hours yeah yeah oh, yeah i ate the fazoli's i had the pasta and i had some other stuff no. like oh okay so he got you that during the sh- during the stream. stream yeah he came over to my apartment oh okay, okay. and i thought he got it afterwards yeah because he because he knew i was working i was like yeah i've been going for 26 hours straight can you get me some food and he <laughs> brought me food and then i uh i think i ended up going 90 and 90. you wait <laughs> i'll Perfect. let you come to the conclusion there bud <laughs> did you lose rank or did you just end up in the same position? I, I, feel I like lost rank. You probably lose rank. I lost rank because yeah. it was Hanzo meta. So I was <laughs> like, I was pretty high SR and I will never forget the West Coast games. I got Unco on my team and he was f- hilarious to this other guy. Like I saw the first Bastion one trick in season 11 I've ever seen, right? This guy's locking Bastion against yeah, old yeah. Hanzo. So I was just, literally, I was just brain off, like just shooting stuff. And I just, I don't, I don't know how I did it. I just was in the zone. Wait, I, yeah, I fucking hate you, Samito. Dude, Hanzo was fucking overpowered. <laughs> that, that was, like, Hanzo should not be... Okay, he was dumb. Agree? Hanzo, should, Hanzo should not be meta, ever. I don't think Hanzo mm. should ever be meta because mm. of the fact that you're just shooting logs across the map for one shot. I think you're a like, person that doesn't like this, mm. too. You're shooting logs the map, RNG one shot, basically, right? I, I, I would rather him not have Storm Arrow than be slow projectile just because, like, the spammy is just annoying. It just, like, it took the... Well, really? honestly... I, huh. It's just I would rather snipe. I'd rather have his kit be slowed down to snipe rather than like be able to flank jump. Like I just I don't know. I don't I don't. And it's it kind of sucks right now because Dragon Strike's bad. It's just I don't know. I think hit scan's just a little bit better than him unless he's like very short range. Yeah. It's just I think his kit contradicts itself. But regardless of that, he's I I see why he's annoying and I think he could definitely use some changes. But it's probably lower on the priority list for things we need right now. Okay. Well, I mean, speaking of which, I mean, obviously we had, the reason I wanted to bring you on was because we had pretty differing opinions, I think, on this, uh, mm. where we could debate it or whatever, however you want. Basically, I was talking about how 
You know, Overwatch 2 to me was, I was incredibly, I might have been in a negative like headspace during this like release or whatever. Like mm -hmm. I was just kind of down about it. Yeah, but too. during the entire thing, I was fucking depressed as shit. About it. I was like, oh, and PVE Overwatch, there's no way this is Overwatch, dude. I mean, I know you, you were the opposite. You were like, holy mm -hmm. it's awesome. It's great. I mean, mm -hmm. your opinion on Overwatch 2 when it, when it uh, was released? Um, well, first of all, question for, I hate to answer a question with a question, right? But real yeah, quick, yeah. what is your, do you like PVE games? Like, do you, have you played Borderlands? Like, just for some context about, like, your POV here. Like, have you played, like, okay. Borderlands 3? Have you played, like, Zombies before? Yes, but not in the Overwatch engine. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay. you, you, you can, you can, I feel like most people can attest to this. Most people are lying if they say they had an enjoyable experience and wanted to play hours and hours and hours of fucking... Uh, what was it called? The, the crisis. No, 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 no. Crisis. Oh, the, the retribution events. Omnic crisis. Yeah, retribution and, events. No, with null sector bots. Um, yeah. Do, could you play that shit for twenty hours? You know, or, or thirty not, hours? Uh, probably not. I mean, again, like, but at the same time, it's how much. The question is how much resources. Okay, a couple things. One. Okay. For players like you and me, like if you are the competitive Overwatch player, you're hurt as you should be, right? Like Blizzard. To me, they have a lot to prove with Overwatch 2 still for the PvP aspect. So if that's why you personally don't like it, I'm in the same boat as you, right? But for me, there's a one, it's fixable. It's they need to get these play the game for you heroes out. They need to bring back what made original Overwatch fun, less wind buns, more demanding mechanics, like a lot more counterplay, in my opinion. Um, I remember your comment about Moira back in the day, but back in Overwatch League was like it just didn't feel rewarding to have four golds or so. I forget what it was you said exactly. You would know better than me. Um, it was just super easy, just kind of boring and lame characters. Yeah, it's not it's not Ana, right? And yeah, yeah. there's no reason those characters should ever dominate the game, and yet we consistently find ourselves in situations that they are because that's the way the leadership team has decided to take the game, whether they want to acknowledge yeah. what we're saying or not. And you know myself. And several others have been very vocal directly to them about it, um, yeah, yeah. receiving mixed feedback. Um, I will give them credit, though. The past two weeks, they have been very responsive, especially after BlizzCon, and genuinely yeah. interested with how they've been answering things. But again, for Overwatch 2, if you're the competitive player, you are nervous, as you should be. They still have everything to prove, and I, I don't want my opinions of the PvE to overshadow that. I just personally think that PvE, and again, expanding upon and innovating, as we talked about last time I was on with the BRs and stuff like that, like what Overwatch yeah, yeah. needs is to innovate, to get more people in the door. I think the best thing that can happen for Overwatch 1 as well, it needs to be free. It needs to be free with a cosmetic overhaul, and a support a creator program. Well, the, here, let, let's, let's slow down a little bit because we could talk about that in a bit, I think, Smith. I think that's a good point. Mm -hmm. uh, but like with Overwatch 2 specifically, I, that, that, that mm -hmm. was my point though, is that like when you see games like Borderlands or you see games like, um, I don't know, you can mention any game, like fucking, do you play Warframe at all? Like Warframe with that game? That game was addicting and it was like a very fun grind or mm -hmm. whatever, right? Like I mentioned, like Overwatch as a game, I don't think... Is very to play PVE. Like I don't. I just doesn't feel satisfying to play PVE. You get me? Like I just yeah, don't I, feel I like. I see what you're saying. I I actually enjoyed it. Now, could I grind it for hours and hours? It needs yeah, yeah. it needs more depth, and that's what I think they plan to do. And I try when it if there's one thing Blizzard gets right historically, it, it, okay. it's not game balance. <laughs> It, it's sorry Blizzard. It's, it's not <laughs> yeah. game balance and listen i this is my first blizzard game and all my buddies at home who played wow know this right and i trust their cause and I, I listen we love you but it's pve that's what they get right they know how to make highly replayable things but okay. and this is so i'm kind of 50 50 what, what i was happy with what i saw but i also know it's not what we need and yeah, yeah. what i mean by that is like competitive overwatch and overwatch one they really don't like it when we say this. They really, really don't. It's being hung out to dry in a sense, right? I don't, I'm not saying we need new heroes. In fact, I don't think we should put more heroes in the game at all until Overwatch 2. I think we need to figure out what's going on right here, right now. And adding more to the pot is the last thing that we need. But we need means for content creators make content, incentivize players to come into the game, yeah. increase quality of life of game. Oh, can you hear me? I was just yeah, you're good. Oh, okay. Sorry, okay, yeah, you, I lied for a second. Yeah, I lied for a second. Okay, we're going, good. Sweet. 
Um, but like all of those things, like they just need to happen for the game. And like, I trust me, they do not like content creators saying that Overwatch One has been hung out to dry. They don't like saying that they've been in the game. In fact, if you look at what they've done with, they they see uh, uh, priority queue and a lot of these other things as maintaining quality of life. But is it content that yeah. will drive people back to the game? No. No, right? I mean they're no. they're just trying to like promote you know some content creators and stuff like that and do that every now and again but they're not like adding more mm -hmm. right they're Overwatch not doing what one. fortnite but does they're not doing do they what really, Warzone does. do they really need to like do they really like aren't they already moving like i know they they say they're not leaving overwatch one out to out to dry but overwatch 2 is probably where 95 percent of their fucking priority is right now oh, right absolutely. getting that game ready to be like why would they even give a shit about overwatch one like the game's already like moving over isn't it? Yeah, I agree. I, that's definitely where they're catering the resources to. One, you're 100 right. And I again, I get why you're nervous. But I, I again, I love the look of PVE. I love PVE games. So I think it's going to get a whole new user base of the consu gaming consumers, and that hopefully that will drive a lot of additional traffic into Overwatch. I'm mean, getting people in your store is a big win in in just business in general. I mean, again, Fortnite, right? Warzone, like getting people in the door is the best thing that you can do because you can direct them anywhere after that. So. That's good, but again, like the only way they're making money right now is from selling accounts, right? For Smurf accounts, which in turn, a, yeah. a lot of the times lower the quality of life of the game. So it's, it's tough. And the biggest thing that I've had to tell my friends in the game, if you're the competitive Overwatch player, and this is coming from me, quit. Don't yeah. quit. Don't don't quit the game, but quit having the mentality that you have, that I had, that rank should be competitive. We want to be able to compete. Like there should be heart and soul and integrity in the game. It will never go to that. Blizzard has made their decision loud and clear. This game is going casual, right? It's just yeah, it's you gotta just, have fun listen, with it. Yeah, yeah. Just have just try to have fun with it and play for yourself and just enjoy. It. And it sucks to say that. And they might be mad. And like at hearing content creators say that, but my answer to you, Blizzard, and this is out of love, this is no hate, put your money where your mouth is. You have not maintained competitive integrity in your game, and this is not me flaming you, this is just the honest truth, how I give it, the honest truth. If you want it's people true. to care about your game and competitive integrity in your game, you need to lead that charge. It's not hands off. It's not you guys, your community, do your thing. You need to incentivize your community to do well. And I've, I've seen players like Hawk, you know, the, you, your former teammate talking on, on, on Twitter about how like rank isn't competitive <laughs> yeah. and they've just get, they gave up on the game and all this stuff. I've talked to him behind the scenes about it because we play Borderlands together actually. Um, oh, really? Yeah, he's, he's right. a good kid. He's a good kid. Well, um, you, but, cause you mentioned how you kind of have to have fun, right? Like that's, yeah. or try to have fun. So when, but like when you, for example, when content, this is not like to necessarily combat social media or Reddit or whatever. Mm -hmm. But for example, if you remember when, when Sleepy, right? When Sleepy used to, like the the flanks for content or whatever mm. and that kind of shit right yeah and that's not necessarily like i don't think he's was trying to throw those games or whatever but that was the mm. perception is that mm. he was but i looked at it, i was like i was watching sleepy i was like how he gets mind state where you can kind of have fun playing overwatch and not be so competitive because he used to be a player for example when i the reason i stopped playing overwatch like cut dry and i'm not even touching the game right now is because whenever i play it a couple hours in i get like too fucking caught up into it you know what i'm saying and I, mm. you probably have the same thing. Whereas, like, when I watch Sleepy, this guy's streaming for, like, 10 hours, and he's just looking at his chat the whole time. He's not even paying attention to the game, right? Yeah. Like, he's just having kind of a good time. Which, mm. to me right now, especially in Overwatch's one situation, a little bit, isn't it hard to kind of, I don't know, just have fun playing the game in, in, in its current state? Well, let's be real. I mean, and it, it did pain. I don't want to have to say this. And listen, I like Sleepy. He's a great guy. I like his content. But he's right. Like that's the only way to enjoy the game. Like literally, and I can, and that's coming from me. I was the most vocal, not the most. I was one of the most vocal anti one tricking, anti throwing, forced voice chat, true competitive experience content creators in in our community. Right. This is me throwing in the hat. You you can't get it back. You can't enjoy the game like this. And he was not wrong for doing it. Like the reality is. Blizzard created the game and they have they told the community we'll let you go play do whatever you want but because they make that decision what happens is they're protecting the one player out of the five on each team that can just troll and do whatever they want pick a terrible character out of voice chat no teamwork yeah. it's not a team game and they they designed overwatch to be a competitive team game in the competitive mode 
and it's not competitive at all. So what's happened is it's slowly snowballed more and more towards that side. And the ball is ultimately in Blizzard's court as the game creators to enforce and, and not even enforce, but inspire and have the system push you towards competing. Tell me why, and I, I get this to an extent. At the highest level of play, you can, you can, you are more restricted for who you can play with than any other rank. In a team-based game, I can't stack with my friends. I can't, and I get why people were frustrated against it. But in hindsight, I was not mad about it. If I play, went up against a tier three team, locking goats, I farmed them. I don't, I don't <laughs> give a shit. Like, like, come on, I, like yeah. that gets me riled up. Like, I'm ready to play. You know what I mean? And. And now it's just like, yo, you can only do it. You should at least be able to trio one per role. I, I do not see the problem in that. Yeah, but, they get rid of that too. Really. Yeah, and I, we've tried. I might, I might pester Jeff again and be like, yo, I, they're probably so sick of me. Oh, my God. <laughs> they're probably so sick of me. It's hilarious. Like, this is the one guy that still <laughs> fucking cares about Overwatch 1. He's just shut the fuck up, bro. We're making Overwatch 2 right now. Give us a fucking <laughs> break. Say, another time, you to Jeff's credit, though, he is very responsive. And he is a funny yeah, dude. He is. he is a funny freaking dude. I've actually been really impressed with Blizzard. Dude, his name is 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 like t like what, what's his what's his actual like in game name? It was like a reference to tits or something like that, or <laughs> like it was like was it that, that's Tiggle? What it is. Tiggle like T T I Tiggle. Yeah, I think it's like Tiggle. yeah, I think it's like Tiggle Bitties, dude. I'm pretty sure. I'm Wait, pretty sure what? 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 Is it not? I don't. That might just be you, bro. I've never heard this before. <laughs> that is what it is. There's no way it's not. Tell you what. There's tell no you what. Way. Tell you what. We'll ask him. <laughs> We'll ask him. Oh, he, he probably won't like it. Yeah. Although he is, no, he's a pretty good, he's pretty chill. He's very, he's really political, dude. I've never seen anybody that, like, even at, like, I met him at the, uh, if you were, you were there at the Phil Grand Finals, right? Or, I, no. I think you were. Mm. Weren't? I was at BlizzCon. Oh. Nope, didn't go to Grand Finals. Oh. I had some oh, okay, deal. So, I had trials. Oh, oh yeah, hey. trials? Oh, you no. idiot, dude. You are, I don't know what I was doing. Teams? I had tryouts. Oh, Oh, okay. I tried. Val I, Valiant was the only team. Shout out to Packing Ten, by the way. Valiant was the only team that gave me like even oh. a chance, and I actually blew them. I, dude, I think I, I was locking, dude. I was spawn camping on Soldier, no cap. I legit. Oh, you the, were, dude. I didn't drop a map in their open tryouts. I didn't drop a single map. I was. What happened? Did they, why didn't they bring you back from the second one, dude? Well, no, I went to the second one. I just got outperformed. My hero pool was. Oh, enough. okay. Yeah, you like my far, my far. I wasn't clean. My Hanzo was clean. But uh, like I was, I was pretty good in like a lot of things. But it's just I, like like okay. I said, that wasn't good enough. So it's fine. But packing no, ten was sense. legit. I love, dude. I sorry to go off topic. Nice I love tryouts. Like Overwatch League tryouts. That environment was the most fun I've ever had playing competitive Overwatch. It was so much fun. Oh yeah, I loved it. Yeah, people were sweating their ass off. People were calming like crazy. It kind of gets old, I suppose, after a while because you realize yeah. how hard people go. Like it's just like mm -hmm. kind of I don't know. It's a little cringy, you know. <laughs> no, oh yeah, maybe it's because we get older. Yeah, but, I mean, in, in hindsight, yeah, I just, that was the first time I had that true experience, and I felt like everyone dropped the ego and just played. And that's what comp should be. Yeah. If, dude, if comp could be, like, if comp could be, like, those tryouts, for example, and, like, Blizzard mm -hmm. needs to do, like, how hard is it to make, a, like, a, a stack ladder where you just play with stacks, or they need to do something for the competitive game. Because, like you said, I, and this is why people should be disappointed. We have not seen anything for Overwatch 1, and that is a problem. That is a problem. I'm not saying new heroes, but any incentive to come back and play the game, at least balance-wise, it's doable, right? Like, look at the game in October. Everyone was playing. It was viral. At, like, Siegel's video, the guy, you're, you're the original poster boy of the game is like, yo, this is the best the game's ever been. And what do we do? Nerf yeah. or buff everything people hate. <laughs> that's what, I mean, that's what it's become, man. That's what it's become. Yeah. People don't like uh, DPSs being very good, I think. It's like yeah. a big portion. I don't, I don't I think that's what the game's what become. It it's... I think it's uh, it's it's a long conversation, but back back to Overwatch too. Is there anything else? I don't want to. I hate. Oh, yeah. I always get you off topic. That's my bad. No, 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 That's my no. Bad. That was good. We were talking. We we already moved on anyway. We were kind of talking about that, and then we kind of because I mean, with the the only thing with Overwatch two is that like I guess I was just cons like I mean, you get me more hyped up for. It. I was like, okay, maybe they are doing something, right? Okay, maybe mm -hmm. they are making it more interesting. Uh, but then I was like, you know what? I don't know. It just doesn't feel like it's well, the the right move. Did so, you did know. you not like the 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 gameplay changes they're making to certain characters? Uh, because again, what like, do you mean? So the knockback you, shit. Well, uh, that whatever. okay. Roll passive. Let's talk about roll passive for a second. I yeah. don't like it. I'm concerned. I'm very concerned because yeah. I think it's gonna rev it's gonna ch make it so that balance needs to be more delicate. And I think that's something that they have not done well, especially for high level play over the past four years. Yeah. Like yeah, it's the tank going one, in the current direction. The, the tank one, like think think about this. If, if tanks generate less ults, that's one one of the biggest downsides to Roadhog is just removed. He won't feed. 
right? Like yeah. it's, it's so that's a big indirect buff to him. The knockback, yeah. for example, Doomfist. I know people hate Doomfist, but just you know, just came to mind recently. He's going to be pretty bad considering he can't do anything to any of the tanks now. <laughs> yeah. And again, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. Listen, I I know people, especially you probably support player, probably hate fucking Doomfist. I don't I don't blame you. I picked hey, I picked him up recently. No, I'm. I think in this game is actually just kind of majority. At least the the very talkative fans are a lot of tank players right now. It seems like mm-hmm. a lot of that's kind of where the love in the game is currently is for people that are tanks because mm-hmm. tanks are not necessarily the easiest role to play, but it is the like least you know depressing role to play. I think in terms of uh, yeah, just you getting play absolutely ball. butt fucked. Yeah, yeah, you can play wrecking ball. I saw your rant with wrecking ball. There. That was funny. Oh wait, which the, one? Uh, I don't know. It's the one where you're talking about how you're just like ranting about. Um, well, we can move on to this, I think, actually. This yeah, would be sure, a good one, sure. because I wanted to actually get your opinion on this. Um, in that rant, you were talking about how people kind of... The rant I'm talking about, you were talking about how content creators and players or whatever kind of like to kiss Blizzard's ass, for the most part. Um, mm-hmm. And I think we're kind of a little bit of outliers uh, to some degree. Uh, but that's what the rant you're going on, and then you're getting fucked by Wrecking Ball. And then, oh, you know, yeah. Kind of... <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> it's just... It frustrates me to no end to see content creators and listen people are entitled to their opinions and i'm not dissing on anyone individually for any reason like you're entitled to your opinion do what you want but just senseless oh nice like just just like clearly just kissing up and not giving crucial feedback in of in this is crunch time this year and a half of overwatch is crunch time we have to say we have to salvage our rep we have to get incentive we have to re-incentivize players to come back to the game and may yeah. and stay and stay people will come back but the concern is will they stay and and have that and being too scared and half-assing and kissing ass to, to the devs is not going to help them it's not like just honest yeah. discussion and it just frustrates me sometimes to see content creators just like very clearly when it's just like so clearly out there just one get mad at people for providing feedback two yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, I wish kinda, I could talk about this pretty... on the show. I, I actually can't. I can't. Oh, we don't can't. have to. We don't have to. Oh, no, I can talk about this. I can't get into specifics just because it's it's oh. involves personal creators and it's just not my place. It's just true. Yeah, don't worry about it. Place. Don't worry about it. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep going. Then. What are you talking about before, though? It's just like it doesn't help anyone, man. Like, listen, yeah. I, I was raised on a lot of tough love. I had a lot of soft love and a lot of t- tough love, specifically from my sports coaches. And I, I like that was oh god, I, the amount of <laughs> laps I ran as a kid, Jesus, bro. Dude, I was laughing oh, yeah? for taking a massive shit in the fucking bathroom, dude. I was known as the shit boy because of the fucking, like, I was, I, my, my, I took a dump, dude. This is off topic. This is just with football. I took a dump and another kid heard my dump take a clunk on the toilet. Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's my worst nightmare. Bro, off topic again. I know, dude. When you're in, the, in a public toilet and, dude, there are some times where you just got to let it rip, bro. If I exactly, hear someone dude. fart in the bathroom, it takes everything to not bust out laughing like <laughs> fucking everything bro like, i yeah sorry yeah whatever you know like, imagine imagine that happens to a personal somebody you know dude and you're just like, oh, I, I, I would start laughing that's happened to my friend while i was taking a dump next to him and i just hear him just <laughs> I, I lost it i lost it we both just started laughing and it made it worse okay. that's the worst part all right we, what, what was this even on about i don't know, why I fucking I don't know. Us. tough love about? tough love for tough oh, love for yeah. blizzard <laughs> like and and, and okay, again yeah. like you know there there's been an Obviously, I can't get into details, but there's been a lot of very productive no, back don't. and forth with the Blizzard team. And I think, and this is something I've been wrong about in the past. And like I said, I want to give them credit where it's due. They deserve credit. They work hard. They're good people. They care about their game. Everyone cares. I think we just debate the methods. And the credit that they don't get that I have been wrong about in the past is that they don't listen. It's not that they don't listen. It's that sometimes they don't see the need to act. And I think those are two very different things because if they do listen, that means they are putting forth the effort which deserves to be acknowledged. But if they don't act on it, then that's that's a philosophy thing that can change with time. If somebody, if somebody doesn't listen, yeah. you're talking to a brick wall, good luck. But if they listen, they hear it out, and there's a path, there's an end game to hopefully get them to change the ways to be more healthy. And that's definitely where I've been wrong in the past, and I want to own up to that, where – I'm very critical of them and say they don't listen, but they do. They do, especially I, yeah, I, I will. You had. Oh, no, sorry to cut you off. Uh, you were just saying no, how saying. you're just like, how, how that you just like kiss people kissing up to them, basically. Is what, yeah, is what I, I don't like that, man. I just, I just, it, there are some times where you see it, and a lot of times giving them credit where it's due is, is one thing, and that's great. Yeah. Absolutely got your way to do that. But when other people are in heated debates back and forth, I, I don't think it's productive to just. 
not tell them to be quiet. <laughs> just not, not telling them to be yeah, a bit yes. Actually, yes, yes. That made me a little <laughs> bit annoyed seeing on Twitter content creators being like well, that oh, Blizzard deserves more respect for X, Y, and Z. And, and listen, I love Blizzard. I think they're gonna kill Overwatch too, but we've been down four straight years in consumer interest. Don't give me that shit. I'm sorry. Don't give me that yeah. shit. I think Jeff is very capable. I think the team is very capable. I think they know way more about game design than I ever could. But if there's one thing that we know, Dustin, it's the consumer because we are the consumer. So we need to be it's as true. vocal yeah. as possible, as much as possible, so that we can help guide them towards what the consumer well, wants. Nobody, nobody's been really blackballed. At least content creators that I know. Like even I, I mm. I've been even trashing. Not, not even necessarily. Like I, like I've been pretty negative about Overwatch League, about Overwatch and all that kind of stuff. And yet they still reach out to me. Maybe they still watch my videos or something like that. That could be the case that they don't actually don't well, see anything I say. But they they still they haven't blackballed me or anything. They're still inviting me to some shit. You know, it's like Trust me, I'm worse, bud. Because you're, 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 you're a good guy. Well, that's what I'm I think saying. They they're they not dumb anybody for, for talking shit or anything. Yeah. Right? I mean they're not dumb, I would say. And what I mean by that is they can see where the intentions lie. Like yeah. For I think for you and me, they can tell that we love the game and that we're passionate about the game. And this is something that we sunk our lives into, dude. Like there's look, think about how big the world is for a sec, dude. And how many talented people are out there, how many interesting things are coming up in the world on the planet. We chose Overwatch of all the things, and we stuck by it for years. They know that our hearts truly love this game. And I think they they're human too they understand that human beings sometimes i say i, I say things out of line all the time I, I straight up told them i was like hey i i went to the community manager jay nash and i literally told him i said dude <laughs> if i say something out of line just call me an idiot like i don't care like literally just let me know because i am terrible with these things right yeah, yeah. and i i even said that one time um just giving feedback in general like i gave pretty poor feedback and they were just like question marking me like what are you like what are you saying and i was like oh, Wait a minute. I <laughs> fucked this up. That's on me. That's that. Like, I, 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 so that took it on the chin. I said, yo, I, I messed this up. I'll be better next time. And next time I was better. And, you know, yeah. I think that the people that work at Blizzard are also human. They see that we're human. They see that we care. And they, they acknowledge that. And the same way that we acknowledge their effort, we realize we're in the same boat. And I think that as long as you go to bat for the success of the franchise, that they, they will want to help be a part of that. So, you know. Yeah. I mean, you've offered up some pretty solid ideas. I mean, like we mentioned, like, but that, I guess that, that the biggest, I mean, not to rag on Overwatch 2 too much or to kind of go back on it, but, you know, like you mentioned last time we talked, you talked about the Battle Royale potential, you should know, of, it, of that happening, right? It but that probably won't, won't happen now because they're going in that PvE direction, right? So that, that was the reason I was kind of big negative about it was because it was like, okay, Overwatch 2 is going in a direction that isn't necessarily directly popular, right? Like they were going in a direction that isn't going to necessarily... <laughs> Get, like net them the big bucks you know what i'm saying yeah. like the long-term massive you know what i mean yeah i think so but i think uh, pve games are also pretty big and i think if they do it right they can get they can net a lot i think i, I it's like a okay. stimulus i, I kind of treat it as a stimulus to, towards <laughs> blizzard um but i i think that a br is not off the table it would need to be a, a you know maybe a year or two after overwatch 2 that could be like the overwatch season oh, okay. 2 kind of like you know fortnite did fortnite season 2 i think a br would be the perfect thing to put in and do it. Oh, yeah. I, I haven't. I don't know if I've talked about this publicly. I, I have a little doc saved away, but basically that doc okay. kind of entails. Um, they need to do it like a Star Wars game. I'm going to say it here. I don't care who cares. They need to do it like a Star, a Star Wars, Wars game, game where you have your ground troops, you have Talon or Overwatch soldiers, and you could those are like the default almost Call of Duty esque characters and like yeah, as yeah, a default yeah. hero. Yeah. And sometimes you could loot or get like a legendary loot of like a hero call, and you could call a select amount of heroes from either Talon's side or uh overwatch's side to like be in the battle royale and that could be like a jedi how a jedi functions in the multiplayer of um like traditional star, star wars games yeah and those were lit imagine if overwatch did that it would be crazy oh, yeah. right and that, that, that wouldn't even have to be a br it could be like a, um, a multiplayer shooter format like there's there's so much stuff that they could innovate with that i truly hope they do after pve the question is the resources are limited and will activision blizzard actually want to commit money time dev power yeah. to that issue and the reality is they won't unless overwatch 2 makes big bucks it's just corporate america deal with it like True. you know it just is what it is
when it stinks because i mean they could do it though because i mean yeah like overwatch one already has you know like you mentioned those fucking those same models like some mm. of those models were op if you remember like, like the hacker that actually like cheated in some of like the the ai from the pve game yes. and stuff like that and actually used them like th those were sick but they never became anything they were just ai that you oh. couldn't play as like overwatch 2 man imagine I'm, if you could play as them dude it'd be it would dude, it would be like look at, i see and that's exactly the kind of questions that we need to be asking blizzard like I want oh, yeah. this. These people are the most creatively talented people on the planet. There is not a dev team that makes something more beautiful and brings a dream to life better than Blizzard Entertainment's team. There's just not. They're the best in the damn world. So why in God's name are we not letting these people go bananas? That's what I want. If I'm dude, if I'm there and listen, I, I don't know everything about corporate America. I don't know the red tape. I'm sure it's a pain in the ass, Jeff. I don't know how you deal with these people, but <laughs> I will say. For the love of God, I'm begging you, expand the horizons of what could be the next Halo in terms of how it just, Halo in 2006, where it just takes the world by storm. Fortnite in 2007, like we could do more than anyone has ever done, ever. Just, and it would probably realistically be like an eight to 10 year plan. Probably because it'd probably take two to yeah. three years of each of these things coming out, and each time we put something out, we would need it to be self sustaining and 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 you know have have it. Uh, yeah, it's tough to do in itself. Yeah, it's man. and it's it's not easy. It's not easy, but I think with the right format, free to play, support a creator, you have permanent advertising, and that kicks back to everyone. I think the workshop is the most important thing as well that we can do in Overwatch One, like in terms of like what. Oh yeah, somebody. Yeah, somebody wanted to ask you, what do you think they should do with the workshop and expand on it? Because like like there's been some like cool things, like example Gary's mod, right? Gary's yep. mod had awesome. Custom ability, mm -hmm. even Minecraft. Minecraft yep. has some awesome shit that you could do in it. I mean, Overwatch seemingly is one of those things. It's just, I, I think the biggest thing that, well, I mean, first, before I let you get into this, the, the biggest thing I heard from an actual developer that works on Overwatch, they said, like, Overwatch is, like, basically a ball of duct tape. Yep. Like, fucking rolled and rolled together. They tell you the same thing? Did they say the same thing to you? Yeah, because or we... Or along those we... lines? <laughs> All I would, all, all I will say on that is I emoji because we're... May Mayhem and I are working on something for ladder or for... Oh, in, shit, in the no. coming months it should be fun i'll keep you posted on that just the eye emoji no, yeah, no yeah. leaks here though uh, did, ella please don't kill me uh but <laughs> um yeah no i i think the most important thing if it's okay i can get straight to that question um for, yeah, for the, yeah, for the for workshop it, is they need a map editor um they need a map editor and they need to allow monetization in some way shape or form for the workshop devs so that they can incentivize um incentivize people to commit time to it like if we get a mm -hmm. map editor it's almost endless we, hell we could make a br Legit, we could literally make a BR Overwatch if we I had know. a map editor. Like, we could yeah. do anything and put power to your community. I, again, we talked about Gary's Mod of Minecraft last time I was on, where like, there, there's a reason they're two of the most successful games of all time. Minecraft, the most successful game of all time, because they allow their yeah. community to expand on their original product. Hell, you could, Blizzard can make money off of it. The devs can make money off of it. The creators can have content. The consumer can play the game. Everyone wins. That's why Warcraft 3 is so... They've already done it before. Oh, do they, oh, do, they do that? 3. I didn't know Warcraft that. Warcraft 3, back in the day, they used to have a custom map editor and model editor, so you could even make your own models in the game. Um, and that was what kept Warcraft 3 alive for so long. And that's why it was like so now, loved by a lot of people. Imagine that in Overwatch, and Overwatch 1 goes free to play. Well, that, but that's, that goes back to my previous point. It's just I heard from a dev, they're like, this game is going to break at every fucking instance. Every patch we make potentially could break the game, per, like fucking ruin the whole thing, whatever. Yeah. Like that. That's From what I heard, Overwatch in itself, the game doesn't really... They would have to make, like, that's why Overwatch 2 might be so big, is that Overwatch 2 might be, like, that redo of the engine I that hope they so. need to actually expand on. I hope so. so, and that would be crucial. Yeah. And in the meantime, well, now, this is probably not worth their time, but I'm wondering if they could have a separate build for the workshop, the same way you, we could launch, like, OPR or PTR or oh, something yeah. like that, and just, like, workshop that people can boot up and go play on. I wonder if that would be an, a quick term, a quick, a quick fix, makeshift fix, until they can redo the... I really hope they redo that engine, though, based off what you told me about the duct tape. I, I really think they, I hope think they did, they right? I mean, I've heard that they're doing that. Would that change anything, though? I just heard coding... Like, listen, none of us... Me and you are both aren't coders, but I think yeah. uh, Anthony's a CS major, and he said that coding is, like, fucking really difficult to not mm. really like once you work on something for so many years you're like you realize it's then outdated by the time that you want yeah. to do something new 
Mm-hmm. So that's kind of what happens with gaming is that you just like you make something after all these years and you're like, fuck, we want to implement this new thing that's awesome, but we just can't because our game doesn't allow it pretty much is what the mm-hmm. it's just, I don't know. It's just kind of like one of those situations. It's like you have fucking cancer and you just can't do anything about it. Right. You're just yeah. dead. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, that's mm-hmm. a little bit fucking dark. <laughs> <laughs> I get where you're coming from. I get where you're coming from. No, it's, it's, right. it's, it's, it's a tough little swallow. But I think yeah, yeah. I, I have faith. There's, there's so much that they can do. And uh, I can at least swear that I will not shut up about it. And I straight up told the dead there, like there are people that were like kind of backtracking a little bit, being like, yo, sorry if we said anything wrong, I'm gonna make sure to be more respectful. And then I literally replied to the devs. I said, I won't. <laughs> oh my god, dude. I'm, I'm god not, damn, like, Sam. You don't give a shit, dude. I know, oh I, my god. I do give a shit. That's the whole respect. point. Well, I know, but that's what I'm saying. But I mean, like, you're, you're I said like, it more well, respectfully like, than that. Ooh. I was like, I basically said I, know, I, know. I was just like, I, however, will continue to do this <laughs> relentlessly. And they know it. And they're okay. like, all right, buckle down. So <laughs> they're like all right put them on mute no, I'm, just <laughs> I, I'm on cool for like don't. half the week on the weekends well, I, I just won't <laughs> well speaking of which i wanted to kind of touch on this before we let you go because we've already held you over a little bit um when so we've talked about how previously there's people been like getting upset over teabagging right and stuff like that and i know you yourself right not in especially well, overwatch actually has had this issue with people bming oh, and not. obviously <laughs> people are a lot of uh, a lot of pansies and stuff like that in the scene so on that same note you have been known to be a little bit of like a not necessarily toxic person, but more of like a very passionate, <laughs> yelling individual, right? Yeah. yeah what yeah. was for you your peak toxicity in Overwatch? Like what year slash date? Like when can you re- recollect that you were in your biggest, you know, tilt mode for like, I don't know, a month or a week or even like a day or something like that, that you can recollect in Overwatch? Like what was the worst time? Um, There have been times when I'm taking something really seriously where I just get personal and I shouldn't. And I have to apologize after because I, I, that's where I draw the line. Like when my banter, like I will, the one line I will never cross is I won't get personal with you. That's like my golden rule. And if I mess it up, I need to, I force myself to go back and be like, yo, I'm sorry. I should not have said that. Yeah. yeah. I'll banter in game. I'll troll. But if I get personal, that shit's on me. Unless you start it and then I'll finish it. Um, But uh, oh my God. I mean, there's been some times in ranked where obviously I've, def- I've changed my vocabulary a lot over the years. A lot of more, a lot, yeah. a lot of words that people used to say just are not considered okay now. And I'm all for that. I, I think it's definitely opened my eyes quite a bit. Like I used to say like the R word, like back in the day, I think it's, it's been like, yeah, uh, I think a lot of people did. Yeah. I think I, I've, uh, I've cut that almost, I've cut that out really completely, which I'm actually pretty proud of. Like a lot of people see me as very toxic, but like for what I was and what I used to say, like, I'm actually really proud of my progress about the better person. I feel like I've become much better at that, but peak toxicity, man, there was one time in scrims. I think in the competitive scene, there was one time in scrims where asking went out of his way to spawn cam me and was typing to shit to me. And <laughs> I, I said a lot of shit I just felt bad about after to him. And, and in chat, oh, in, no. in scrims, he was pissing me off so much. Oh, my God. Um, and that was also a combination of me not wanting to play anymore and forcing myself to play another season. That did not help at all, oh, my yeah. mental. Um, yeah. So I apologize, too. I felt bad about that. It was just, it was just dumb. And then I think in ranked... <laughs> oh, God. I've, honestly, I've said oh, so no. much. There was one time where I had a Pop-Tart rapper. And okay. Wait, wait, so, wait, where is this going? Uh, uh, well, this is oh, this is go. This is about the, my rank experience where I was raging at some kid. Okay. okay. All right, all right. Um, and there was this mercy man that made me so mad. Oh my god, it was just such a dumb play. I was just, I just had it right, and I was just like, "You're fucking dog shit. You're, you're trash. Right? You're shit player. Okay. All this stuff. Like, guess you, you know how already it was. amping up a little bit. Yeah. yeah. And and then some kid in my chat called me toxic, and I had been fueling up on pop tarts for my stream naturally i could do that when i was 21 right not anymore so you're all full of insulin you're fucking all sugared up right yeah i'm all sugared up <laughs> and so he goes you're toxic i'm like you know what if i call this pop tart pop tart rapper a pop tap rap rapper it's not toxic right if i call okay. this mouse a mouse it's not toxic and then i got i got my mic real close and i go if i call a dog shit player a dog shit <laughs> player it's not toxic i think it's actually clipped on my twitch channel <laughs> oh my called pop tart and <laughs> and then there's a clip <laughs> of me spilling my grilled yeah. cheese that was painful yeah i was i've gotten way you better <laughs> like i've i've become oh at this God. point i don't think people realize it's it's a persona right like if you meet yeah, me yeah, irl yeah. i am like literally nothing like i am Unless I'm drunk and playing sports, 
in that case, yeah, well, maybe. How do you keep that up, though? How do you keep that up? How do you keep that energy up? How do you keep that, that uh, or I know you're already that high of uh, energy of a person anyways, but how do you keep that persona up? Because I know a lot of people, not, not, it's like, not a bad thing or anything like that, but from what mm -hmm. I hear, people are like, how do people keep up a persona for such a long time? Like, people are like, oh, you need to be yourself on the internet, right? Like, people assume that XQC mm -hmm. on stream is like XQC off stream, which he is, sort of, but he's mm -hmm. still like an amped up version of himself on stream, right? So, you said it perfectly. People, you mm. said it perfectly. You take a part of yourself that exists and you amplify it, right? So when I'm on stream, trust me, there's a ragey gamer in me. Trust me, he's there. When I get mad <laughs> off stream too, right? Do I break my desk in half? Sometimes, right? Not as much as I do on stream just because like you're entertaining and like it's not fake, but you're also, you also understand that you are entertaining. And I think that's the most important thing as a content creator to get. It's like, what, what is you? What do you want to define you? And there are a lot of times that I regret my ragey self because I'm not like that. At, like, I'm not like that at all in person. Literally not at all. But so we're know, playing video games, basically. I, it just I comes out of me, man. Any sport. I'm petty. Well, I, I am these – listen, people, people call me toxic, crybaby, all these things. But you know what I tell them? I tell them I'm the sorest loser on this planet. And that's – I attribute a, a lot of my hard work to being a sore loser. I hate losing. I just, it just frustrates me. I lose sleep. I never live my mistakes down. They haunt me every night. I can't sleep. I hate it, right? But I wake up the next yeah. morning and I try again. That's all, that's all we can do in life, man. Get after it. You can respect it, yeah. Well, on that note, I mean, did you feel like you have to do that kind of thing? Like, do you, ha do you feel like you have to kind of, uh, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's just because naturally you are like an entertainer. I heard that people that are more naturally entertaining are kind of like, just kind of do that anyways. But do you feel mm -hmm. like you have to kind of put on a persona or is that just kind of... Something that just comes naturally. It comes naturally for me, man. I can't explain it. Like I was, uh, like I was always just the ragey kid. I just, I loved making my friends laugh as a kid, and they always laughed at me raging at gaming. They made fun of me so much <laughs> in school, dude. When I was in middle school, oh my god, heel, like dude. I was a squeaker. I was a, imagine, <laughs> imagine me as a squeaker, buddy, in Call of Duty. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people still are. I mean, I can, yeah, I can yeah. definitely imagine it. I imagine what you were saying. I could, I could hear fucking young Smito in my ear yelling at my face for. Dropping a fucking point five bomb. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I can fucking hear it, dude. Oh my god. That's just like how it was, man. And it's like you, know? you don't have to fake it. You don't have to do anything. Just just take a part of yourself that you think you can build on. Build on it. And it, and you kind of become that in a way. And just just do what do what makes you happy. But like one the one thing I wish I could do and, and take back and do differently is if there is ever someone that that's feelings like I genuinely hurt or like fuck something up or like hit a hit a nerve or something like i feel terrible about that so bad because that's not the point of my contents but make people laugh yeah. like I, I i wish everyone would take my raging as satire but i also know that not everyone will so but that's a that's a yeah, risk yeah. i'm gonna take you're gonna piss people off in life it, it just is what it is so i pissed off the mercy man yesterday awareness. too yeah oh well, no. i mean oh, yeah, uh, Mer nerf mercy it's that's common. what i'm saying yeah, yeah it is at common. this point it's probably common dude well, shit, dude. Person. All right, we held you over, Smeal. <laughs> fucking get rid of her, dude. Nerf her up. <laughs> no, thanks. No, thanks for thanks for coming. I'm not. I don't. I don't listen. I don't want to oppose any mercy man here. That's not the entire purpose. Listen, I haven't touched Overwatch in a couple months. Okay, but I'm coming back maybe in the next month or so. We'll see. We'll see. Sweet. Uh, yeah, but thanks for coming on, Smeal. I appreciate dude, your time, buddy. It's always thank nice you for having me, you, especially. Yeah, especially since we have uh, you know differing opinions on Overwatch. You, I, mm -hmm. I think you've convinced me in some direction. You know, I hope they make it like you know something entertaining with the. Uh, you know, PV or something like that. You talked about how, like, this was, like, I think, like, a month ago we were on last. Did you, did, have you watched that thing you were talking about or no? You still, no. Like, uh, close. Oh, we, no. We, we added okay. one more product to it. Ooh, do I say it okay, right good. now? Do I say it right now? Um, no, you, you don't have to. You don't have to. Tell you what. You if if I come day. back on, if I come back on next time, I'll announce it. All right. All right. Sounds good, Samino. We'll fucking hold you to it, bud. That's fucking right. awesome. Thanks, right. man. Sounds good, bud. Okay. Talk to you soon. See you, Smino. I need, I, we need to work on an outro for it, but fuck, man. Thanks for coming, Smino. I love you, bud. I love you too, bud. Oh, it's already, you're already fucking blanked. Oh, my God. Oh, oh no, you're good. Okay. Yeah, bye, Smino. Fuck you. Fuck you, bud. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really ruined that outro, oh. dude. Fucking hell. <laughs> Brain's in fog today. Brain fog today, son. That was awesome, dude. Smino's an awesome guy. Awesome dude, obviously. Uh, had a lot of positive opinions about Overwatch 2, which is something that I was obviously a little bit tilted about the previous week, but I think he's opened my eyes more um and, and looking at overwatch 2 in that kind of light i suppose um but don't maybe we'll have to get some on in like a couple weeks see what he has to announce that'd be fucking dope that'd be sick well shit uh that's thanks for coming cool. to the show today guys yeah it's pretty cool uh thanks for coming to the show today guys if you are uh, unaware 
uh, of what our show is and stuff like that. We basically talk to, you know, esports people slash people in the scene, personalities, streamers, all that kind of shit, uh, including Samito. And then we also talk about news and esports and then in the scene. So that's kind of the purpose of our show. And uh, that was the purpose of today. So catch you guys tomorrow on Fuck It Friday. We have Dota Capitalist coming on. So we'll probably talk about some Ooh. Dota 2 tomorrow. Probably talk about some of that shit. T.I. Talk about his person, you know, personality and casting and stuff like that. That'll be awesome. That'll be dope. Uh, but shout out to, to Alberto, to Samantha and Siren behind the scenes being awesome people. But uh, as per usual, we're all shitters on the show. Myself, Max, and Anthony. And fair, uh, enough. Yeah, fair enough. We'll see you tomorrow on that bombshell. Bye-bye. <laughs> You know, Dustin, you're really not giving yourself a whole lot of outs for being the poopinator with uh, that whole poop story you gave. No, that one was unlucky. That was remember AJ, dude. That guy was a fucking asshole. Uh, oh, I remember. Yeah, I was on a Wasn't football a fan team of the guy. Him. I was on a football team with him, and I took a shit in the bathroom, and he just laughed at everybody when I was fucking what is a clunk. But I'm not the poopinator. We've already been over this. <laughs>